Ken here, your Thrifty Apprentice. And today we are going to be doing an unboxing, swatching, and field test painting demo for Shenhan Professional Watercolors. Now, um, these paints are in a tube and I normally paint from dry down tubes. So I needed to go ahead and do the unboxing portion of this video so that um, I can get the paints dried down for the swatching. I am going to be panning them up in a palette that I picked up, if I'm not mistaken, from Jerry's Autorama. It had 15 wheels in it, or yeah, 15 painting wheels, and then six mixing wheels. I glued down some half pans into three of those mixing wheels in order to make enough space for the 18 colors. So this is what I'll be panning in today. Let's go ahead and get this cracked open and started. We'll break this seal. Uh, so the paints are just wrapped in plastic here. Yeah, I can grab something. It's okay. It's okay. Just, you know, it is okay. <laughs> I did not want to grab something. All right. So we have here... On the front of the box, Shenhan Professional Watercolors. Uh, a superior blend of the finest colors, Shenhan Professional Watercolors for the discerning artist. 18 colors, there's an AP stamp of approval and the CL stamp of approval there. Flipping the box over on the back, no information. Side panel says 2013 Shenhan Art Material, all rights reserved. Made in Korea, ShinhanArt.com. And of course, Shinhan is a Korean art manufacturer. And these are seven and a half milliliter tubes, and there are 18 included colors. Popping open the box here. On the inside of the lid, you're going to have the same information from the cover, including the color names for each of the included. This must be the entire range. So this, cause there's too many names to be just 18 colors. I had to do the math right quick. So yeah, that's the entire range. 18 colors are included in the box. We have a white, black, Van Dyke brown, brown, red, vermilion hue, yellow ochre, permanent yellow deep, lemon yellow, yellow green, viridian hue, sap green, olive green, cerulean blue hue, cobalt blue hue, ultramarine, Persian blue, violet. Okay, from first impressions, looking at the colored names that are listed, I am having some serious doubts right off the bat about them being a professional watercolor. Most of these are hues. Now, I do understand that most companies are making the green switch to produce um, synthetic or give more synthetic colors or synthetic pigments, should I say. Um, therefore, you're going to get hues instead of colors like cadmiums, and, and I do understand that completely. Um, but with there being so many hues, I, you know, it does bring into mind the question of whether or not right off there are a professional versus a, you know, really good student grade watercolor. Let's take a look at the tubes. Here it says Shinhan Professional Watercolor Viridian Hue. So there's your color name. You're gonna have a light fast ratings and that looks like a transparency stamp on the opposite side of the light fast rating. Uh, that's a three star, two stars, three stars, two, two, three. So I'm only seeing two and three stars in here. I'm gonna assume that the light fast chart goes from one to three. I will be doing some checking on that information um, before we get to the actual review for these paints. I do believe that's all of the information. Let's see on the back of it. It's going to give you the AP stamp of approval, the pigment number. Okay, so we do have pigment numbers included. Do not place this product in direct sunlight. Do not put in mouth, not for use on cloth or fabric. Uh, made in Korea, Shin and Art Materials Incorporated, then it gives, it looks like the address. The tubes themselves, okay, that 
feels to be aluminum. That, that's a metal tube. Uh, it's a screw off cap. It, it, it's not capped off with any type of foil. Um, thank God these aren't like the medicine tubes. You know what I mean? The ones you have to puncture the tops. Um, those are normally, normally the sign of a super economical brand. Uh, so pretty standard tube. Uh, all of the relevant information is included which is a good thing. Let's go ahead and get these panned up. Now, I'm not sure if I will be uh, speeding this part up or not. We'll see. I'm just gonna shake the color there and we'll start on the end with some white. I'm not gonna put a lot down. Just gonna put down enough to get a good testing sample for the paints. That is white, number 401. So stock number, color names, light fast information, transparency stamp, and pigment numbers are all included. Pretty good considering the fact that this was pretty budget set. This is 402 black. Has a light fast rating of three. White has a light fast rating of two. Interesting. Neither one of those had any type of binder separation from the pigment. Although I will say the white was a little, just a tad bit thicker in consistency um, than the black seemed to be. I am shaking these just in case. This is 417 Van Dyke Brown. Oh no, that one is definitely thicker. It's a pretty color. And I'm not a huge Van Dyke Brown fan that one has a light fast rating of three and it is made from pigment pr 101 the black one was made from pigment pbk6 and the white is pw6 which pw6 i think pw6 is chinese white i believe all right next up we have 407 brown light fast rating of two pigment PR, PBR7, pigment brown seven. Oh, that one's thick. Brown. I guess that's supposed to be burnt sienna. I guess that's what they're supposed to emulate. All right, next we got 406 red, light fast rating of two, pigment PR17. PR17, okay. That one kind of had the consistency that the black had, so it was much looser than the others. But again, no binder separation from any of them so far. Next up, 412, which is vermilion hue, light fast ratings of three pigments. This is dual PO16 and PR48 colon one. I'm definitely gonna do some research on some of these because I haven't encountered some of these pigments before. Some of those pigments are definitely new to me. Uh, PO16 and PR48 dash colon one. Okay, all right. Next up, 413 Yellow Ochre. I don't want to put that there. I didn't mean to put the, I'm putting this in a color range that it came out. I hate I did that. That's fine, it is what it is. I should have reordered these in a different color order. Um, 413 Yellow Ochre, Light Fast Ratings of three. Dual Pigment again, PY42, which is what I'm used to, and PY83, Pigment Yellow 83. Okay. Now, I wonder why it was necessary to do that as a dual pigment. It's a yellow ochre, for heaven's sakes. Okay. Forgive me for saying using that for heaven's sakes phrase. I didn't mean to offend anybody at all if I did. I really, really didn't intend to. Um, 405, permanent yellow deep, light fast ratings of three, Pigment number PY83, okay. What was in yellow ochre? 
So they stretched PY42 with PY83 in the yellow ochre. Interesting. But why? Why was that necessary? Um, next up, 411 lemon yellow, light fast ratings of two, dual pigment again, PY3. They could have just left it there, but they stressed this one with a white. It has PW6 in it. So yeah, PW6 is Chinese white, mixing white. Um, I don't, hmm, why did they need to put white in there? Okay, guys, I'll be honest with you now. This is just the, the unboxing section. Um, I'm really curious as to why some of these pigments are dual pigments and why they're being, why did they stretch lemon yellow with white? Why is that necessary? This is supposed to be a professional set of watercolors. Okay, um, let's see here. 404 yellow green light fast ratings of two dual pigment PY3 and PG7. So you have lemon yellow and PG7, which is thalo green. I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's thalo green. Yeah. So uh, lemon yellow and thalo green to make up yellow green. Okay. Interesting set of paints so far, my friends. Interesting set of paints, no doubt. Next up, we have 410 Viridian Hue. Light Fast Stars 3, and it is PG7, which is Thalo Green. <laughs> okay, Shanahan. Okay, okay. And that consistency was really kind of watery in comparison to any of the other ones so far. And I'll still say no binder separation so far. So, I mean, you know, uh, as far as the physicality of the actual consistency of the paints, they're doing pretty well. I'm just really curious about a lot of the pigment choices so far. Next up is 416 Sap Green Light Fast Ratings of 2 Dual Pigments. You're going to have PG7 and PY2. This is Thalo Green and Lemon Yellow. More Thalo Green than Lemon Yellow versus the Viridian Hue being more... No, Viridian Hue was straight Thalo Green. And the Yellow Green is more lemon yellow and less thalo green. So all of the green colors are definitely made from a thalo green base, which is, I guess what it is. Next up we have 412 olive green, light fast ratings of two pigment makeup is PG8, PY1, and PY2. Okay, so this is a three combo for olive green. I'm going to do some, I, I, I promise guys, I'm going to do some serious, serious, serious pigment research before we get to the review. It's going to be interesting to see how these perform. Next up, what do we have here? Uh, 415 Cerulean Blue Hue. Light fast ratings is two stars. You have pigment PB15, which is thalo blue. Yes, indeed. All right, so yeah, and it's got a light fast star rating of two. Interesting. I guarantee you there is some white in there. There's no way. Now, it's not listed. But there's no way they created a Sarut. Yeah, there's white in there. I'm sure. I'm, I, I guarantee it. No, okay. Based on what I know about watercolor paints, I would believe that there is a white in there that was not listed on the tube. Let me put it like that. I don't want anybody trying to sue me. Um, 418 Cobalt Blue Hue Light Fast Ratings of 3. Pigment makeup is PB29 and PB15 uh, colon 3. So, ultramarine and thalo. Ultramarine and thalo. Well, some form. What is PB? Okay, so thalo comes in shades. So, maybe that's a... 
I have to figure, I'm gonna have to research it and see exactly which Thalo shade that is. But ultramarine blue is mixed in it too. And that is cobalt blue hue. Mm. It is purple. It is definitely um, purple in it. Yeah, it's a lot of ultramarine blue in there. A lot. Uh, next up is 403 ultramarine blue. Light fast ratings of three. Single pigment PB29. Imagine that. Thank goodness we were able to get a single pigment ultramarine blue. Thank you for that, my friends. That I appreciate. Could you imagine a dual pigment ultramarine blue? I know they do it though. Like ultramarine light sometimes. I've seen white mixed into that. Um, 409 Prussian blue light fast ratings of two. You have pigment PB15 colon three. Pretty blue. That's pretty pink. I hope these dry down well. And lay. Oh, now that one feels loose. The rest of them didn't, but this one feels really loose in the tube. This is 408 Violet. Light fast rating of two. It's made of PV3 and PR81. Yeah, pigment research is a mandatory. Oh, it came out pretty nice though. Okay. All right. So that is all of the paints. That's what the box looks like. The tube looks like the information that is listed. The consistency, as you guys saw how it came out in the palette. Um, I am going to give these time to dry, um, probably overnight, just to get a little firm so that I can then move into doing the swatching. So I can definitely have this video ready. Um, for release date. So I will see you guys on the swatching side.
I'm going to start off by sketching out the composition here. I'm using a red Crayola erasable color pencil um, just because it really will erase well if I make mistakes, which I typically do when I'm drawing. I took a ruler and I dropped my horizon, which was probably halfway up the paper. I don't normally suggest that, but for this particular composition, I, I, I did put the horizon line there. And as you can see, I'm just sketching in some bushes, kind of mountainy area in the background, a little peninsula off to the left side, and then a couple of trees in the foreground for a focal image. Now, I didn't like the way that looked, and I always try my best to correct uh, my sketching if I catch it not looking right in the beginning, if I can. Uh, I'm still not sure if I was completely happy with it, but I did decide to just go ahead and move on from that point. Um, here I'm throwing in the third of the trees in the foreground, and now I'm going to move on to doing some painting. Now, I use quite a few colors here. Um, I'm using Cerulean Blue. I'm using Ultramarine. I'm going to be making up a darker mixture of blue, um, this Cerulean and Ultramarine with a little uh, burnt umber mixed in it. Then we have more of a darker tone with ultramarine cerulean blue um burnt umber and a little burnt sienna mixed in um i'm got a green going there that's actually sap green with just a touch of ultramarine blue no 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 that's just sap green so basically what i was doing was laying out all the washes that i was going to need i completely wet my background and now i'm going to go in and lay down a wash over the entire paper basically what i want to do is kind of incorporate all of the colors that i'm going to be using in the painting in the background in a really soft kind of diffused wash um not necessarily trying to make it look hazy but just wanted to make sure that the the painting was going to look really harmonized. Now I'm going to go back in and do a second layer of that. It's still really watery at this point. Um, I'm using lots of water. I don't want there to be a um, really bright color when it dries. So after that dries, I'm going to go in and I'm going to start mixing up the colors for uh, the painting. I'm going to start with the horizon line and all of the items placed along that. I'm mixing up a really, really dark green here. Now, there's a lot of colors mixed in there for a lot of reasons. One, I was testing the mixing ability of these paints due to the fact that a lot of them were made up of so many multiple pigments, which I really didn't understand. I wanted to see if I was going to get any clean mixtures, if it was going to be muddy or hazy. So for this really dark green mixture, that's like um, hooker's green, sap green, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, um, and a little orange, um, which in this case is a vermilion thrown in just to get a really dark color. As I moved back towards the peninsula, I lightened up on that color by adding in some uh, pure sap green. You're going to see me actually drop in burnt sienna and vermilion just because I liked it, just because I wanted to. And then I'm going to continue that tree structure in the peninsula out there. Now, taking uh, sap green with just a little ultramarine mixed into it, I'm going to draw the grass up under the peninsula. And I'm still mixing in that burnt sienna and that vermilion in order to incorporate that color more into that little cluster of trees. Now, the top of those trees was really easy to do. Took a number two round synthetic brush, and you just want to barely touch and tap the paper. Um, takes a little practice, but it becomes something that's kind of second nature once you do it once or twice. I enhanced the colors in the water um, from the ones that were in the sky, cerulean blue and ultramarine. And then I'm taking a very light wash of the same color I used to paint in that mountain range. Um, to do the shadow just so it will reflect really softly into the water in front of it. Next, we're grabbing some ultramarine, uh, not ultramarine, some burnt sienna with a little bit of vermilion um, and a little bit of burnt umber. We added in the dirt up under the peninsula so you could see that there was land there. And then I decided I needed to throw in another tree just to round all of that out. Let's move on. Two trees, speaking of trees. Doing the trees in our foreground, I'm going to be mixing two different colors. I'm mixing a lighter reddish brown tone and then a really 
dark brown. One's going to be my highlight color. One's going to be my shadow color. I start off with the highlight color and actually draw the tree in. Once I get the shape that I want, and here I'm actually using a cat's tongue. That is a, um, by, um, no, I'm sorry. That's uh, the dagger brush. Dagger, I'm saying cat's tongue. That's uh, the dagger by um, Craft Ammo. That is the uh, Lindsay Warwick. 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 I'm sorry. I might be mispronouncing the last name. The Frugal Crafter. You guys know who I'm talking about. These are her signature brushes by Craft Ammo. And this is one of them. Yes, this is the dagger brush. And that's what I'm using to put in the um, branches. Uh, actually, the whole tree, and it's a three eighths dagger brush, if I'm not mistaken. It took me a painting or two to kind of get control of it, but once I did, um, I really like it because it helps me keep those branches small when I want to. I can press down a little bit heavier on the brush in order to, you know, fatten them out in certain areas. I haven't tried doing like whole leaves with it yet, but. This next on the agenda, I really, really like it. So I'm using that brush um, with those two mixtures of brown to draw in the three trees in my foreground. And I'm basically using the same technique in all three trees. I'm gonna put in the branch, I'm sorry, the bark uh, with the lighter color. I'm gonna come down it with the shadow color after throwing on a couple of branches. Then I'm gonna mix the lighter color back in again and enhance the branches once more. And that's going to be how I paint those trees. Uh, from this point, I'm going to move on to putting some land for those trees to connect to. Uh, it was looking like they were just kind of floating there. So I threw in a foreground. I'm going to add in all the colors that I've been using. Greens and oranges and burnt sienna and burnt umber. Uh, take those colors and continue to blend them. Uh, see if I can get them to harmonize adding in shadow color as I go along just to kind of break up the eye and to give it a little bit more depth at this point I wanted it to look like the mountains are just far back on the other side and you'll see here I'm just sharpening up things and I'm going to throw in those rocks that I sketched in it was kind of hard to see where I had drew some of the things because I'll be honest I did lose <laughs> the red lines uh, now here I'm doing some splashing and that's just to see how the paint is going to flow. I'll be honest, these paints had absolutely no flow to them at all. It was hmm, interesting paints, interesting paints. I haven't said much about the paints themselves. I've just kind of been letting you guys know what I've done in the actual demo. Just because I didn't, uh, I'm trying to save all that for the review. But these are definitely some interesting paints. I, I will give them this. I, I did not experience... Mm, cloudy, muddy mixes. I'll just say that. Uh, I, I didn't. So here I'm just mixing up a bunch of greens so I can do the leaves on my trees. And it's not going to be anything super complicated at all. This is a really quick way that I learned from Chris Petrie um, to do leaves on a tree. So I mixed up four different colors, each one of them going a shade deeper and a shade cooler. And I'm just going to use a flat brush and I'm literally just scribbling those leaves. I'm going from color to color, depth to depth, shade to shade, doing a little splattering to make sure that I kind of fill in those areas, make it look like a few flyaway leaves. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and use the darker of those green tones to throw in some grasses using a credit card scraper to pull some up. I'm um, just throwing them around here and there, making some longer, some shorter around the um, bottom of the bark of the tree. Here, we're going to go in, fill in those rocks, putting in shadow up under those rocks. We put shadow uh, under the tree there just a little bit. And we're just enhancing and splattering and enhancing and splattering. I like the flyaway leaf look. Um, and it also kind of makes it look like there may be a lot of birds flying in the sky, too. Uh, speaking of, here we go. We're throwing in a few birds. I decided I need them. You guys know I am with landscapes. I have to have birds. Birds, birds, birds. Love my birds. I was signing my name and I messed it up. So then I dotted it up and turned it into grass. Yay. See, we don't make mistakes. We fix it. 
Now, white gel pen number 10 jelly roll is going to throw in all the highlights I need. Water, trees, um, trees in a peninsula, grass, and that's going to wrap it on up, guys. Um, that is pretty much how I got through the first demo painting for these paints. Okay, my friends, there you have it. A unboxing, a swatching, and a painting demo. Uh, as it stands, I'm going to be very honest, I am, um, I have very mixed emotions about the paints um, so far. I'm, I'm not going to get too into detail because you guys know I like to save everything for the review just in case some opinion should happen to change. But there are a few observations I did make about the uh, paints that I don't think will change because they're pretty much a characteristic of the paint. Um, so what I will go ahead and say is that I did the painting demo first uh, before I did the swatching because I had a huge question mark hanging over the word professional. Um, after doing the painting and giving it time to dry, walking by it for an hour or two, you know, just thinking about my experience with the paint doing the demo, uh, doing the little demo. Yeah, I do not honestly believe these should be classified as professional paint, so I did decide to swatch them in my student grade um, swatch book on the Canson XL mixed media paper. Now, with that said, the second thing that I noticed um, is that the paints have, um, after they dry down, they have a look, a, they lose a luster they seem to lose luster. Let me say it like that. They actually put me in mind of, you know, your pretty run-of-the-mill student grade, middle-of-the-road quality paints. I mean, I, I hate to make any comparison at this point, so I won't. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint with the paints uh, a few more projects, maybe use them in a couple of mixed media aspects. Just try them out in, you know, different ways on different types of paper. Here we have mixed media paper. Um, the demo painting was done on 100% cotton paper. This is 100% cotton watercolor paper, 140 pound acid free by uh, New York Central Art Supply, which is actually a really nice watercolor paper. We'll get into all that later. Um, so I'm going to test it out on other types of paper and just see what happens in different types of projects. And we'll get, you'll get to see some of those things coming up over the next week or so of the channel. And then in about a week and a half, two weeks or so, just after I've had time to really, really just use the paints, we'll get around to doing a review for them. Um, yeah, guys, and that pretty much brings this video to an end. Hopefully you guys saw something you like. If you, if you did, please go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Subscribe, hit the notification bell so you're knowing that content is coming out. Help the channel grow. Share, sharing is caring, and that also helps the channel grow. As you know, if you've ever seen any of my videos, in the video description, you're going to find links to the Facebook group, Paints, Pencils, Pastels, and Markers, where we do all things arts and crafty. Link to the uh, most recommended product list, good in quality, great on the pocket. And you'll also find links for the Etsy shop, just in case anybody is interested in supporting the channel and or supporting my business. Um, I would love it. Thank you guys. Really appreciate it. With all that said, I will see you guys coming up really soon in the week and I hope you enjoy it. And remember, as I always tell you, just keep painting and crafting.